Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Welcome yet again to a wonderful, exciting, invigorating episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom. We always do our best to bring life-changing information and we bring uh, entrepreneurs from all walks of life. And I do have one such entrepreneur in Memma Thiakama. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I, I say the karma guttural with a Yes. I hope you don't mind that. No, that's wonderful. <laughs> the that's the way, way it's supposed to be. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, just tell the viewer who you are and, and share your background a little bit. Okay. Mm. So um, I come from California in America, and I've lived all over Africa my whole life. Mm -hmm. I think in Botswana now it's 32 years. Where in California? in Berkeley, in oh, the okay. northern part. It's near San Francisco. Yeah. People might know that area. Berkeley is famous for what? The 60s? Yes. Yeah. And the hippie era. The hippie era, yes. 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 And Carry very on, huh? liberal uh, yes. thinking. Yes. Sorry about the interruption. Like a melting pot of people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but didn't spend too much time there. Was you know traveling all over. Mm. Uh, my my parents were doing work, uh, you know, in Africa. My father was an, a paleontologist. My mother was uh, an anthropologist. But she then started working with Peace mm. Corps, USAID. What's a paleontologist? What do they? What is paleontologist? Yeah, that's very. <laughs> He's tongue tied saying yes, that. Yeah, what, yes. what does it mean? No, he he used to uncover like unearth the rat bones mm -hmm. from uh, millions of years ago mm -hmm. and they would start to reconstruct mm -hmm. around that what the people were were doing in, mm -hmm. in the area so yes very specialized yeah. area very specialized okay yes. back to you and then yeah mm. so uh so i grew up all over africa in east africa then west africa later in my teens and then came to South Africa, uh, Botswana, mm. actually, when I was 17 years mm -hmm. old. Yeah. Okay. And, and what, in terms of training, background, academics? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so academics, it was a tough time, as you'll find out when we talk about my book. Mm. Uh, but uh, so that that caused me not to be a, not to go to college, mm -hmm. and I, I started and then stopped, mm -hmm. and then went into business at a young age. Mm -hmm. I studied massage therapy as an alternative mm -hmm. to see you know how where that would take me in the interim mm. thinking interim that i uh, know i would get to university one day mm -hmm. but it didn't happen mm. because life took over yes and um so yes i was a massage therapist for mm. you know many years and still and mark zuckerberg and bill gates have proven you don't need to go to university some of us don't some <laughs> of us do <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know yeah um yeah, it's, I don't regret anything. Mm. I would, let me say that. Yes. But yes, mm. sometimes it's it. You know, you 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 never know. I may go mm. back at some yes, point and yes. do some degree. Okay. But yeah, so I was a massage therapist. I I, I uh, started my own business in Botswana doing that, and it was new. People didn't know about massage, mm. and they would think of this massage what, parlors. The, around and what time <laughs> you started it? Uh, that was 1990, I think it was, yes. And then it grew from there into a passion for healthy life mm -hmm. and gyms and, you know, I, had, I was always active, very active as a, as a youngster and into the bodybuilding scene and mm -hmm. into, you know, athletics mm -hmm. and running and mm. cycling. And wow. So uh, my husband and I started a gym in Botswana called Energym Health Studio. I think it was in uh, Broadhurst. It was, and before it was in Broadhurst, it was just opposite Avani Hotel. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that yeah, okay. area. I know yes. that area, yes. yeah. Mm. It was in a little house, mm. and we had 300 members in this little tiny house, mm. and it was very intimate. Mm. <laughs> um, we were the first to bring spinning, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that 
we were first to bring a lot of different things yes, and yes. Uh, and that's where I think the entrepreneurial spirit was really mm -hmm. born in me yes today we're going to talk about entrepreneurial creation tools mm. um, first entrepreneurship just define yourself as an entrepreneur as you are now mm -hmm. before we now deal with the right the the subject of the day which is entrepreneurial yes. entrepreneurial creation tools right mm. so to me an entrepreneur is a pioneer it's somebody who is at the forefront uh, coming with new ideas and is creating out of that mm. something new in the market mm -hmm. that hasn't been seen yes. necessarily mm. um, in that area and, and this is something that I do continually. I've seen myself doing it um, throughout my life mm. in different ways. And I think I'm a, you know, I, I may not be an entrepreneur in the sense of business necessarily, but I have done that. I have done mm. that. Yeah. But I'm an, an, a life entrepreneur. I've heard the word social entrepreneur. Being social used. entrepreneur, yes, mm. yes. Mm. Okay. And um, so right now I'm a coach. I, I studied coaching uh, about six years ago mm -hmm. and started my own little business doing that. When we sold our gym assets, then we moved into, into different areas. You mm. know, my husband was in politics and mm. I decided to go into coaching. Mm -hmm. And it's an area that I am just totally at home. I feel very comfortable in. Mm -hmm. I, I had started a, a, a youth program, which was similar, uh, but it was about mentorship not mm -hmm. not coaching and so i had i have background okay uh, all right yeah now we're going to talk about your book rough diamond mm -hmm. a lot during this conversation okay. but before we get to the book and it's a beautiful book by the way thank you did you self-publish uh, i didn't self-publish mm -hmm. i have published with someone in the U united states mm -hmm. but i'm about to be self-published okay yes all right we will we'll uncover all of that mm -hmm. we're going to talk about creation tools the first point creation are born uh, not raised creations are born not raised mm -hmm. um, unpack that for us yeah you know um, if you think about it when you're creating something it comes from nothing you mm. have a blank canvas and you being the creator you have to give birth to that idea or that thing mm. uh, that you want to do that business that you want to get into mm -hmm. and I think that at times in Botswana especially we get stuck in the notion that you know I can learn everything from my mentor I can learn and do everything you know there's a there's a one from step a two step three yeah. steps to do everything and mm. I want to get a book that tells me if, if I do this and do this and do this mm. it will happen mm. um, and I look at it a little differently to that I, I, I want to find the creator in you mm -hmm. and I want to and unpack that and unleash it because mm -hmm. I believe that everybody has it um, mm -hmm. in, in, inside and that's what I do in a lot of the business coaching that I do when it said business coaching I want to find the entrepreneurial spirit and what is it that you're really passionate for mm -hmm. what is it that drives you what is it that is, is owned by you mm -hmm. it's your copyright right and when you say they are born I've had yeah. people argue that entrepreneurs are not born they're not made is it a similar phraseology, similar type of thinking? Not born, not made. Yeah. yeah. Mm. W which one do you believe in? Do you think they're, they're made or they're born? I think they are born. Mm. It, it, that entrepreneurial spirit is born in you. Mm -hmm. uh, to want to do something different, to be different. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are a strategist, for example, mm. it's, it's, it's again, you can, you can learn entrepreneurial tools. But if you don't have that, that spirit initially, um, that you're tapping into, mm. it's not going to come out like, like yeah. the way that you see these amazing entrepreneurs in the world today. Mm. Um, yourself, thank you, very you know, much. as very one, <laughs> as one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And when you say they are not raised, mm -hmm. they explain that. Explain that mm -hmm. to me. And uh, you know, creations are born, not raised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who is raising creations? And exactly, who yeah. does? Mm. Can you raise a creation? That's true, yeah. Mm. So, so it has to be from within. From within. Mm. And only you can find that. Mm. I can't teach it to you. 
As your parent, I can show you all the tools and as your teacher, as your mentor, I can give you step one, two, three. But if you do not birth the idea, mm. it, it, then it's not really entrepreneurial, right? Okay. Yeah, in that sense. Okay. Then it's a business idea. Then mm -hmm. you're following steps. Ant an entrepreneur is born. Mm. And that entrepreneur is inside. It's mm -hmm. incubating inside of you. And we just need to tap in and find it. And once you find it, you begin to grow it mm. yourself. Okay. Well, carry, no, okay, let's carry on. Words matter. Your yes. words matter. Um, use them wisely. Yes. Um, is this something that entrepreneurs have to be aware of? Mm -hmm. And perhaps in, in explaining this one, you give examples. Yes. Mm. So if I say to you, um, I'm going to try to build uh, a new plaza mm. in in Habaroni and it's going to have a sports center and it's going to have many things. I'm going to try to do that. Uh, I want to try to do that by maybe next year. You give yourself what, 24 months mm -hmm. or something? Yeah. Mm. Okay, now, if I say to you, Mohobe, I will mm. build this center mm. in the next 24 months and my plan is that I'm going to hire these people and these people you can, see, can you see the difference mm, mm, mm. already you are believing me yes, your head yes. before was sort of nodding you're like yeah maybe mm, okay mm. Now I'm but now you're saying vigorously. definitely mm. I can see that you're gonna do it mm. I will it was just changing that word mm -hmm. so when we speak we need to be mindful mindful about what we're speaking into existence and this is something that I train people in mm. um, and and we practice it and we use it um, as a tool for your, your goals mm. getting to your goals mm. so if I say I will I'm already in action I'm already taking that action I've got my first step first foot forward so there's something powerful about the word will yes I shall, I declare, mm. I commit. Mm -hmm. These are all power words that we can use and be mindful of using. When I say uh, I might, I want to, mm. yeah, maybe, it's got a different flavor. Mm. It's not a definite thing. Mm -hmm. But when I'm committing to something and I, I use those power words, mm -hmm. it really helps uh, people to move out of whatever situation they're in uh, whatever challenge they're facing and because it's something they're willing to commit to something mm. they're willing to be accountable for and I shall I mm. will mm. What, why if is I it why is it that if you use the word will uh, or the word shall yeah your results are significantly different from when you say uh, for what for instance when you say um, I might or mm -hmm. I think people will even say I'm gonna I'm gonna mm, I'll try I'll try yeah yeah um, I believe that you're now becoming accountable mm -hmm. for what you say. Mm. When you're accountable for what you say, that's when you have integrity. Mm. And have you seen this play out in your life? And are you able to give examples? Yes, um, many times. Uh, when, I've, when I've set out to do anything that I'm passionate for, that I really believe in, it happens. Mm. And it happens, I've seen myself speak it into happening, into mm. action. Mm. Um, building our house, for example. Uh, in Roretzi. Yes, Roretzi. <laughs> ah, you know where I live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, um, it's out in the bush, and it was 1988, and I had just met my husband. We weren't married mm. for another 10 years, mind you. Oh, okay. And I loved this hill. I was so attracted to this hill that's right there. There's a copy there. Mm. And I would walk up this hill, and you know, I had to go through brambles. There, mm. was, there was big holes with <laughs> pigs in them, and, <laughs> you know, kolobe yeah. everywhere. And, uh, but I would go, and I would sometimes go with a friend, mm. and we would go up on the hill, and we would, we would just look down, and I said, that's where my house will be. I will build there. Mm. She said, what? How do you know that? Mm. I said, no, I, I know it. This is, this is how it's going to look. 
Mm. It's, and I visualized it and I started making plans about mm. it, even though it hadn't At occurred. that time, financially, you're not ready. Not ready. Mm. Not even engaged mm. <laughs> to be married. This is not my land, right? Mm, yes. It's, it's, so I'm sitting there doing that. And that's the first time that I really remember doing it so mm. strongly. And, mm. and uh, it, it came to, to life. Mm. My house is there now. Is it because you immediately acted on it as well? I didn't immediately act. Mm. I was dreaming about it, yeah. um, but I was speaking it into existence. Wow. My words were, sp were definite. So you didn't just visualize, you no, spoke. I spoke about it. Mm. And finally, it, it, did a, it did happen. And it was very funny because shortly after that, my husband, uh, he, who wasn't my husband at the time, he, yes. he called me and said, can you, shall we go out there? We need to choose a piece of land. I need to choose a piece of land. Mm. Should I choose this side of the hill or that side? Mm. What do you think? And mm. we were walking around, mm. and I have a photo of that actually of yeah, the day. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, I told mm. him, I think here, mm. why? Because mm. of this, because of that. But mm. I didn't really have much reason why. Mm. But he, he bought into it. Yes. Um, people will buy into you if you use these words of mm. power. Uh, well. if, if I use uh, shady words, mm. you know, like maybe might, try. Mm. Wow, that's really, really powerful. It will be hard for anyone to buy into you yeah. in that respect. Let's talk about integrity, you know, practicing mm. integrity and influence. These are, these are things that you've done throughout your career. Um, what are your insights on that point? Mm. So in the consciousness coaching space, that, um, that I come from, the background I come from in that training, we learned that integrity is doing what I said I'll do by when I said I'll do it. And this gives such a sense of surety and assurance to another person, but also to myself. And if I start acting on that and following through with it, um, if I say I'll be there at a certain time and I'm not, already I'm sending a message to my brain that I'm not reliable. The brain is recording this all the time. So everything we, we are doing. So it's really important to be mindful of what mm. we are doing and what we're saying and how we're doing it and mm. when we're doing it. Um, so it, just practice being on time. That's, mm. that's one thing you could start with. Uh, anyone could start with. Mm. Um, other people don't need that. They might need to practice um, you know, showing up for meetings. They might need to practice um, finishing tenders, you know, so they get the, mm. you know, get a chance, mm. get their foot in the door. Yes. Mm. Um, and, and, and the other aspect is influence, mm -hmm. practicing influence. How do you practice influence? Well, for me, there's, we all have our spheres of influence, right? Mm. So my sphere is my sphere. So whatever is mine, my beliefs, my relationships, uh, I stay within that sphere. If I go out beyond that, where I can't influence as, as easily, right, then how much should I expect back in return from people or life? If I'm constantly talking about the gossip that's out there and focusing on that instead of focusing on my business, for example, or my, um, my household, um, then I'm not going to have the results that I would really like to see mm. out there. And if I continue to talk about politics and the weather and get really far out, mm. then, and, and God for that matter, who I don't control, mm. right? Um, I think we can agree, we don't, yes. we don't no, control we don't. that. It's the other way around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that is being in, the, in your influence, in your sphere of influence, and you will have so much more impact. Um, I have discovered it in my own life, you know, when I was focusing on what people are saying and doing rather than what I was doing and saying. Do you actually have to consciously cultivate your own sphere of influence or you will intuitively discover it? No, you need to cultivate it. Mm. Become aware first. Mm. I mean, even me saying it today is allowing viewers to be aware uh, that this is something. Mm. Um, and really look at your life. Where are you doing that? Where are you outside of your influence? Mm. 
of your own influence and you're trying so hard mm -hmm. but really you don't have an influence over what people think mm -hmm. they're going to think whatever they think so right. how do you then cultivate your own sphere of influence yeah. is it something you do physically or is it a mental construct mm -hmm. or a combination of both mm -hmm. it's it's both mm -hmm. yeah and uh, you begin to notice you know some people take a a rubber band and every time they they out of it they snap mm. <laughs> until they get it mm. right um, it's you can create little nifty tools for yourself mm. like that but mm -hmm. it is something that once you're mindful of it it starts to come naturally once you are aware of it your attentions on it you say oh there I go again so you literally have to yeah. step out where you're not yes. yeah, where you're not it's not your sphere why, right. why do you yeah. bother why yeah. bother because mm. you're not gonna have much impact there okay you're a coach, you're a counselor, you're a mentor, or you're one, or you're more a coach than a counselor, or? Correct. I mean, I suppose the question to ask is that, is it equally divided, or, and then how do you manage all of those three? So, I, I, I am not a counselor by profession, I'm a coach and a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, what I mentor is in psychosocial support for youth, mainly. Um, you might mentor in entrepreneurial business or law mm. or something that you know yeah, property more of. Yeah. Yes, property. Mm. Yes. So um, I mentor in the psychosocial support area for youth because that my background mm. was rough as a child, mm. as a youngster, and um, so I feel that I have something to offer these ones because I grew out of that mm. and I found ways to transcend it. Um, my my background and my mm. experiences and so I really can offer them something I think in that space mm. mentorship is more about um, teaching what you know right and then coaching is finding out what the person knows mm -hmm. internally and bringing that in nourishing it and getting it to come out gently okay. yeah and with coaching, we ask a lot of questions, um, much like what you do here <laughs> with, the, with the interviews. Mm. Um, but I'll be asking questions for a specific reason, because somebody has said, OK, I want to, do, I want to clear the, my relationship with my spouse up, or I want to deal with, I want to build that plaza, mm. and I need a plan. Mm. So a coach will help you mm. work with the plan. Mm -hmm. And then. It's, it's a lot of people say that it's, it's as healing, if not more, than counseling. Mm -hmm. Some people who've been to me have said that. They've been come in, coming in very depressed, and then they'll leave after six sessions mm -hmm. back on track with their life and yeah. doing what they want to do. You say you've had a rough childhood. Are, mm -hmm. you, are you willing to share in what sense it was rough? Mm -hmm. Because it has given birth to the coach that you are, the yeah. counselor that you are, the mentor, the mentor that you are. Sure. So I was, when I was born, um, my parents gave me up for adoption. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing that happened. And the way I was born into the world was also a t rough. Were they married? They were not. Okay. They were not married. Mm. And, you know, I don't want to unpack too much because you have to read it in my book. Yeah. However, yeah. <laughs> however, it was it was very rough it was not a, a great mm -hmm. start to life and hence the title rough diamond. rough diamonds yeah. yes we'll get to that yes. in a moment but yes yes so so um i was adopted then straight away almost and um started living with this other family mm. um from like age two three no just just two months old no. so from a newborn mm. as a newborn but i was a drug baby Wow. Uh, my mother had taken substances, mm. illegal substances, uh, when she was pregnant with me. So the drugs were coming out of my system. And my parents, my new parents, didn't know this. They weren't informed mm. when they adopted me. So they were dealing with a drug baby mm. um, and all that comes with that and didn't know it for, for many years until I was 21. And I actually went to search for my biological family and found but out did the story. Did it affect your, your growth in any significant way? I think there were some areas in, you know, um, academics where maybe there mm. was something. My mother wasn't sure as mm. well. Mm. Um, but no, mm. funny enough, 
all that she did to, and my father did, to put into me um, and give me a better life, they did, and I sucked it up, you mm, know, it was mm. like a sponge. Okay. Um, I soaked it up, I took it in, I did... So the know, roughness the did not... Unless maybe you want me not oh, to... Oh, there's to more. There's much more. There's okay. more. Right. <laughs> so we need not go deeper. But suffice it to say that the, the teenage years were, t were rough, were they? They were very tough. I, I left home when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And I was out on my own. And I had no parents in the state of California with me. Mm. And... Did you go to Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm just curious. Everybody gets attracted to Hollywood. I know, I know, no. It's like uh, people are attracted to Hollywood like a flame. Uh, what's the word? Yes. Like moth, moth to, to the flame. flame. Yeah. No, I was, I was actually scared of that. Mm. <laughs> I said, no, yeah. I was going the other direction. Mm. Um, you went to the East Coast? No. I stayed in California mm -hmm. because I knew people there and mm. I had, I created a support network around myself mm -hmm. of friends, families and different people that I would meet, teachers and, okay. I, you know, I would ask for their assistance. Mm -hmm. And this went on for like about a year and a half, two years until I graduated high school, barely, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. by a thin thread. I graduated, I was the first person to jump on the stage, mm. just jump up and for joy <laughs> and throw my cap in yeah. the air. Yeah. Because you didn't think you would. I didn't think I would graduate. Just by the skin of your teeth. Yes, very much why? so. But why? Because I was working, mm. two jobs, three jobs, babysitting on the weekends, mm. trying to make it um, wow. while I'm still going to high school, plus dealing with having been abused. Mm. This is the reason I left mm -hmm. uh, gender-based violence in the okay. home. And having been raped at a young age, mm. 13, mm -hmm. um, dealing with all these emotional traumas. All this is in this book. Yes, mm. there. Okay. It's there. <laughs> okay. All right. Then I will not spoil it. If you want the juices, the you can yeah, go and I'll look I'll in the I'm book. Going to, I'm yeah. going to read the book. Yeah. Self-care tips. I mean, this is obviously based on your experience, and you might even talk about it in the context of your recent uh, COVID scare. Mm. Because, um, you know, the body equals a healthy mind, not always the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, unpack that, can so, elaborate. So I, you know, I have always been into the health, into my health as from a young age. Mm. Uh, I think I got involved in gymnastics when I was five years old. And from there, I had injuries, but then got into other sports, rowing at, at high school. And so I was always active, horse riding, doing a lot of different things. Um, dancing and I got to know my body very well through all this mm -hmm. later uh, got into road cycling people here in Botswana know me for that mm -hmm. I was the fastest female cyclist for three years throughout wow. the straight yeah. and started Cellar Riders uh, mm -hmm. road cycling network yeah which is now a, a full club also a yeah he was also it. got into it I yeah. had to drag him into it but now <laughs> yeah. he loves the yeah. sport he loves yeah. it yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I feel that having a fit body mm. equals having a fit mind. When my body is not fit, I definitely know my mind is mm. muddled at that, at that point. And I don't think it's the other way around, that you start with a fit mind and then mm -hmm. your body becomes fit. Mm -mm. It doesn't always follow the same way. Are you saying people way. whose bodies are in a mess? overweight, obese, uh, mm. unbalanced, mm -hmm. can never have a fit mind. I don't believe their mind is, is fit. Mm -hmm. It's not working at the optimum. Because why? It's the brain as well is part of, of the, the rest body. of the body. Mm. And we forget that because we're up here somewhere in mm. the clouds, mm. but we forget to ground ourselves in, in the body. So you can be fat and fit. Yes, you can. But that's, there's not a whole lot of people who are, but mm. you, you, can, can. you can have you mm. know somebody who's overweight but they are fit mm. generally mm. Um, so yeah i think that's something that people really need to look at when they are um, so you you the science has uh, has talked about the point the body mind connection mm. and they've they've actually mm. talked about how exercise creates new uh is it neural pathways mm -hmm in the mind. Absolutely. Are you able to, to say yeah. a bit more on that? Yeah. And is it something you've researched? And it's a, a bit. Mm. So when you do something and you do it over and over, you are actually creating neural pathways in the brain and you are reinforcing them. They're mm. already there, but they're not necessarily connected. Mm -hmm. So this, 
to connect them, you've got to keep doing the same activity over mm. and over. Mm. Um, this is why they say, you know, when you're, you're dieting or you're doing something um, that you need, do you're trying to break a habit like smoking, uh, you need to do it over and over for, the, for six weeks. Mm -hmm. That's least. the time when those synapses can then, mm -hmm. you know, align. And you're now putting down roads, mm. basically, in your brain to follow. And then it's automatic. Okay. It just comes automatically. So do you believe that your life sort of suddenly had direction because you now became very involved in sporting activities and exercise? Always. I mean, that was a big part of my life. Mm. And it really helped me. Mm -hmm. um, it helped me stay out of bad things like mm. you know I was you know offered so many things mm. substances and different things um, I was never interested in that because mm. it would affect my athletic performance mm. and I could see that from a young age like age 13 mm -hmm. you know that's when drugs entered high school and people were trying all sorts of things mm. and I tried to smoke cigarettes and I tried it for two weeks and I couldn't run mm. I, I was like I could feel my lungs mm. So, yes, so I, here I was having COVID the other day. Literally. Yeah, now we can talk yes, about that. Yeah, yes, yeah, I was having COVID the First other day. First of all, how, how do you think you got it? Oh, do I know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, mm. I had been at hospital uh, for my back. I have some back issues. Mm. So I had been there for two days in the ward. And I don't know if I picked it there, but, we, you know, we were tested. Everybody was complying with everything. We were sanitizing, the nurses were very mm. dressed up. Masks were on and everything. everything. Mm. So I really, I don't know. Mm. Um, it's either there or a, a ho member of the household staff mm. caught it because uh, they were the first to, to mm. be identified. But my, my own theory is that it's all over the it's place. It's all over. Mm. It's so all over. I mean, and I said, you can't blame anyone mm, mm. please don't blame people because no. that's one thing i saw happening in families everywhere here in yeah. Botswana. it's like she brought it to me <laughs> yeah, she yeah. killed grandma she yeah. did this yeah, yeah. he no, did that it's not very not, not very helpful mm. for us so how did it manifest how did it realize that things are going uh bad cough mm -hmm. dry cough then fever then body aches pains headaches um everything you name it is then it true there was that a you can never really explain breath. it to another person unless they've had it you can never really communicate the pain it, it i've had someone say that yeah it is like that but i think it's the the mental anguish and mm -hmm. the emotional anguish that maybe you know you you're now leaving this this life mm -hmm. you're leaving this earth and what are you leaving behind do you have everything together mm -hmm. have you done your <laughs> Have you done your will? Have mm. you got things lined up? Mm. Uh, you ask yourself those questions. All those questions start coming up when you're very close to, you know, that situation where you could die. Mm. Um, it's very, it's quite a serious, dis you know, I won't say it's disease, but a virus. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if people who haven't experienced can take it as serious. I didn't mm. beforehand. Is it? I said, but I'll never, I'll, I won't get it because mm. uh, I'm so fit, I'm healthy, mm. I know, you know, I cycle 70 k's on the weekends mm. and, the, you mm. know, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, no, yeah, that's about as a I'm well of, and mm. why should I and get you, it? And immune system was okay. Immune system seemed to be fine. Mm. I was taking supplements and, mm. you know, eating good food and not so drinking mm. and smoking and all of these things. So it's not as if there's a particular lifestyle that attracts it, no? No. No, it, it, it really is so random. It's mm. very random. And this is what the doctors were telling us. Mm. They said they're just seeing people, different people, especially the new strain, this mm. Delta. And now there's another there's one. The Delta Plus and yes. the Lambda. You know, yes. you keep hearing stories. Yes. Okay, now, why did you feel the need to, to write a post about it? I, I, mm. I saw a very touching post on uh, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and which really led me to invite you to the show. Why did you feel it was necessary to, to talk about it so publicly? You know, um, well, I lead a pretty public life. Uh, that's been happening for, for the last 10 years. So um, I hadn't posted about my experience during COVID. I couldn't actually even post anything, really. Mm. I was just flat. Mm. But uh, I really wanted to give thanks, give thanks for my life, give thanks uh, for the people who were 
literally saving our life. Mm. And we needed those doctors, we needed those responders. Mm. Uh, people were coming out to the house because there was just no room at the hospital. And uh, that was a service that they were providing to many people at that time. Like, I saw them work so hard on Sundays. Uh, 14 patients to see around town. Mm. And they had to get to all those places and t spend like an hour at every mm. house. These are doctors. Yes, are and EMTs. Nurses. Mm. Yeah. And wow. they were so professional and so mm. kind and generous. And yeah, I just wanted to thank them mm. really. That was. Do you want to mention names or you think they. Oh, Dr. Rasul from, mm -hmm. uh, from Sidi Lecha Hospital. Mm -hmm. He's an mm. amazing doctor. Mm. Um, came like third in his class in India and mm. just is, is an amazing guy. Mm. But, but compassionate, calm, steady, mm. you know. And the other one is Adil uh, Jacobs. He mm. comes from, e e he's an EMT mm. and he's with emergency assist. But yeah. really everybody at the, 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 the staff that I saw and other people that I've seen are just Mm. You know, they're giving their life to this, to, mm. uh, to us, to live. To and, and they know the right medications they as well. They know, they mm. know. Mm. And especially because they see so many people on a daily basis yeah. uh, with this. Yeah. Let's talk about transcendence. I think something you believe in. Mm. First, define the word. What is transcendence? For me, it's, it's like ascending. It's, 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 it's rising above. It's rising above your circumstance, your situation. Um, even above your attitudes, yes, because mm. sometimes our attitudes stop us from mm. moving forward on our yeah. dreams, yeah. Is it a practice or is it a state? It's a state. When you get to it, mm. you get to it and you know, okay, I've got there. But how you can, how you can get there, mm. those are practices, yes. Tell us about those. Mm -hmm. So, I find that silence is the best for me. Uh, that is my, my practice. So I will practice being silent for 10 minutes in the day and just sometimes hand on the heart, mm. just, just like this. I go within. It's not like meditation, It's is almost it? like meditation. I mean, you could or say it's meditation. It's a form of meditation, yes. Because I've heard people use the word transcendental meditation. Oh yes, you that's a specific uh, group of people or you know, tribe yeah. of people doing that, yeah. practicing that kind mm. of meditation. Mm. I looked into it at one stage, but it seemed a bit far-fetched and ungrounded for me. Mm -hmm. um, but people, some people, mm. it's perfect for them, you know. If, if a skeptic were to ask you, how has it really helped you? Uh, I don't think it's, mm -hmm. it's mumbo jumbo and it yeah. doesn't work. Well, how would you respond? Yeah. Yeah, no, for me it's worked. Mm. For me, taking that time with myself and my thoughts and dealing with my sphere of influence, mm. I bring it all around me and from there creation is born in mm. me. I, from there I become excited, I want to do things immediately. After that 10 minutes is up, I'm mm. ready to, mm. to go and I have ideas bursting out of me. So it's like recharging your battery? Recharge, mm. it's just like that. Wow. Just like that. So that's one way to transcend. Another way is to become aware of your attitudes and the things that are stopping you from moving ahead mm. um, on whatever it is you're doing. It could be a project. It could be something practical, you know, mm. a book, writing mm. your book. Mm. What stops you f completing it, you know? I hear you're writing. Yeah, you I'm, may I'm be writing. writing soon. Well, I've, I've asked someone to help me, so... I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to give excuses. I was just <laughs> procrastinating, <laughs> thinking I'm too busy, but I've, I've, I'm now doing it. I'm yes, now doing it. Yes. Keep asking me that question. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I that I can push, can push me. And so, so if you, if you're practicing, um, to, to face your fears, to face uh, the the demons that are, you know, stopping you doing things, to face your attitudes, to mm. face, um, maybe. A difficult conversation with mm. someone mm. that you need to have to move forward mm -hmm. right that's when we begin to transcend and we separate ourselves from ourselves, mm -hmm. and we can look down and see the situation for what it is not what you're describing sounds like something I read in a book called the power of now by Eckhart yes, Tolle yes yes where he's talked about the watcher he mm. said discover your watcher mm. be able to come out and watch yes. the situation Almost yeah. like you're a non-participant. A 
absolutely. Is that what you're referring yes. to? Yes, yes. Mm. But you, uh, you are a non-participant, but it's your life. It's yes, I You're know. watching that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that separation, mm. it's brilliant. It's brilliant for, for, you know, diving into the next area that you mm. need to go to and mm. seeing where you need to go from there because you get a different perspective on life. Wow, yeah. wow. Let's talk about rough diamond. Now, yes. this is the moment you've been waiting for. I'm going to <laughs> pick a, uh, uh, you know, a topic at random okay. and ask you just to tell us what we can learn from that. Okay. Soul song imposing wild and exhilarant. 10 to 11 years homecoming. Mm. Just, God, what is it about? <laughs> it was about me coming back to Africa mm -hmm. after many years away and feeling at home. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it was, it was coming to a totally new country that mm -hmm. I hadn't seen, and new culture, and it was West Africa, Niger, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, and I felt immediately that that is where home is. Now, you know, I was, I was also trying to get away from a terrible situation in my family, mm. and I, my parents were now divorced. Yes. So there was a struggle there. Mm -hmm. And I think I you've said enough. Know, we'll have to yes, buy the book now. Didn't know um, which way to go, mm. but home. Okay. I was going to ask you, how did you jump from Senegal to, to Botswana? <laughs> but I have to read it in the book. Yes. Soul song intense and sustained. 11 to 13 years initiation. Mm. What's that about? Initiation into womanhood. Mm -hmm. Yes, into my womanhood. And again, is that post marriage or pre or just pre uh, prior to the marriage? Yes, or it's pre you're talking yes, about. Yes. Okay, yeah. all right. Soul song. What about all these soul songs? What this usage of soul songs? What's all that about? <laughs> so I crossed over when I was 11 years old. What does that mean? That means I left my body and I went out. I my heart stopped and I was brought back to life by mm. my stepmother who was a physical therapist and my father. Um, mouth to mouth resuscitation. Mouth to mouth, yes, mm. yes. And where I went to and what I saw there changed my life forever. Mm. Just mm. shaped me into who I am today and my sp shaped my spirituality really. Did um, you see the other side? I did, <laughs> yes. Wow, I suppose the book explains how it, it does, was. It does, it does. And, and, and how does it link with Soul Song? So Soul Song, when I was there, Everything is like connected through music, through so that's how I experienced it, through mm. song. Mm. I could hear every blade of grass singing. Mm. It, I could hear its tune. Mm. I could hear the melodies, the harmonies of everything. And we all have a place, is what I knew. Mm. And I knew there was something much greater than me, mm -hmm. which we would call God. Yeah. You know, most people would call it God. Mm. Well, I call it God. Yes, mm. yes, I, I call, call it God. God. Yeah. So that was there, ever present, but not in the way of a person or But how like long this. were you gone for? Mm. <laughs> Do you have discovered I all have no, I have no clue, but because you'll see why. Mm. Um, the situation, they didn't explain anything to me. Mm. That's all I know is I was there. But okay. Because yeah. people say they've seen other dead people that side or mm -hmm. people from this side. Yes. Uh, did that happen to you? It did. Wow. It did. I've got to read this book. <laughs> Baroque, Renaissance, and full. 17 years traveling gypsy. Uh huh. I have to ask again is this pre or post pre. marriage? Oh, pre. okay, okay. <laughs> it has to be, yeah. yeah. So, yes, it was. It mm. was coming here. Mm. I was traveling all through Europe before I came to Botswana mm -hmm. and then came down uh, wow. to visit you did, my mother. It wasn't just a gap year, it was 17 it gap years, sort of. <laughs> Is that a good way of putting it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So was it just one coincidence after another? It was. Wow. It was. And okay. that's what the book basically takes you through. So the soul song is our song. Mm. Each chapter is a song. Each chapter has a flavor, mm -hmm. if you will. And that's what I'm doing with the, the different words uh, mm -hmm. that I put there. They are, they are different sounds. So mm. you'll imagine the sound of that mm -hmm. and you'll know okay the chapter is going to have this this mood to it mm, okay right well committed invigorating and clean mm -hmm. that's 18 years and yes. there's pula with an exclamation mark <laughs> tell us about that so isn't botswana that 
isn't it invigorating clean ah, and yeah <laughs> it is all of that so yeah and that's what i found i can't I imagine myself living anywhere else it's very i can difficult. visit yes but it's very difficult mm. to imagine mm. um no we have it very very good here as Something although intoxicating we about the place yeah? yes mm. absolutely mm. and that's what i found when i first got here mm. If you live in Habaruni, it's a little muddied because mm. now people are just complaining a lot mm -hmm. but and, and not realizing the beauty of what we have mm. he here. Unless you've traveled, I think you yeah. don't know necessarily that. What do you think of the controversy that was in the papers about you going to the Kotla with some jeans? Oh, yes. <laughs> you remember that? It was on social media. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I thought I'll throw that at you. Uh -huh. How do you respond? Uh, well... What what do you want me to well, respond the, to? Well, the newspapers were saying it was wrong of you to be wearing jeans in the kota, mm -hmm. something like that. Yes. I, I didn't pay too much attention to it, but I thought yeah. I'd throw that yeah, hot little potato. Rocks jeans in kotla. Yeah. <laughs> that was the headline. Yeah. Talafang Charles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you handle it? What's your take on it? So my take on it is that it was not a formal meeting, mm. and if it had been a formal meeting, I would have definitely not be dressed that way. Mm. I would be dressed culturally correct. You're just passing through. I was passing through. Mm. And literally, we had just been at some other functions before. Mm. It was raining out, mm. and we'd just driven up from Habroni. Little did you know that some cameraman is going to yeah. just make a huge issue out of it. The tribe, mm. if, if those women of the tribe had seen me mm. coming into a formal event like mm. that, they would have rushed to mm. put something around me. They mm. would never have left me to, to, mm. to be there. But mm. that's not what happened. Yeah. No, I, I think as a, as a public, high-profile public individual, you know how to deal with that. Yeah. Which is to say. Yeah. Isn't it? Absolutely. So I was just throwing it at you. I knew yeah. you. it wasn't bothering you one bit. No. Teen spirit, a cover the genius within. And this is something trademark. Yes. Tell us about trademark youth mentoring, psychosocial yeah. support. So I started that. Um, mm. It's for age 15 to 19. I started that in 2010. Mm. And yeah, 2010. What exactly is it? Explain to the people. So it is mentoring youth in the psychosocial so support. So you know, a lot of youth are going through a lot of different problems, mm. um, and they're they're having a lot of problems outside of themselves as well. Like you know, in their immediate surrounds, they'll have drugs, they'll mm. have you know um, peer pressure, they mm. have bullying going mm. on, they mm. have parents who may be neglecting them, mm -hmm. they have. Um, a lot to contend with. At the same time, they need to get good grades and pass mm -hmm. their exams. Okay. Um, so there's really a lot going on that we don't attend to these kids. And I saw there was a, a, an area there because I had been one of those kids. You're talking about which ages? 15. 15 yeah. to 19. Mm -hmm. But we go on into the 20s, we mm -hmm. carry on with the program. Mm -hmm. So once we've got those kids in the program, then they become the mentors mm -hmm. and we train them to be mentoring okay. others their peers and this has been going on for you know the last 10 years quietly i might i might add mm -hmm. you didn't probably know about it well, a lot of people don't yeah know. I'm, I'm hearing about it I, the fact that you even registered it as trademark yes, yes. what's that about yeah what's what's because i wrote a whole book mm. i wrote a whole manual and i've written many manuals for mm. for this program mm -hmm. and you know, at some point it's going to go out there yeah, and, yeah. and be big, mm. and I know that. So I wanted to make sure that everything was tidy mm. and that my copyright was there. Yeah, and that yeah. It's, it's That's my very emblem smart. because I saw some churches opening up and they, they were taking some of the, the colors, the material, the things, and I said, whoa, <laughs> I yeah, have, to, yeah. have to protect this work. Yeah. Because and that's good advice even to an entrepreneur yeah. out there. Absolutely. Something that you do as specifically for you that you created, it's, it's, it's a good idea to copyright it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing, one area where I helped with uh, the Broadway show, mm -hmm. Kula, mm -hmm. which went to Broadway in New York two wow. years ago. Yeah, we had 50 performers. I was their patron mm -hmm. and I helped write their script for the, for okay. the actual show. Um, they they did had no clue about contracts and all of these things, which through the gym, mm. I had learned all of that, yes. you know, that we need to have watertight you contracts. You went to Broadway? Yes. Who was the main yes. actor there? Is it Mr. Mullo? No, no, not that one. No, there was uh, Ho Faone Modisi. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
well, he was the main actor, but there, was, there were many leads mm -hmm. in the group. So there were lead musicians, there were lead so singers. Who wrote the play? So it was Andrew Letzokola. Oh, okay. Yes, from Mopato Dance Theatre. Okay. You've probably seen them perform. They've been at you know, a lot of corporate events. So you partnered with him? So they asked me to be their patron mm -hmm. for the show, okay. for this specific show that they were doing. And uh, they weren't doing it as Mopato Dance mm. Theatre. They, they were bringing seven different dance groups and musicians together. They appreciated the value of the brand. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. Mm. What an experience. I can say that's probably the highlight of my life, Isn't that experience. It taking ran them for how long? It, it only, we were only there for like a month in the States, mm. but, or less, three weeks, mm. but we, we got around and mm. we performed, and then we performed on Broadway Street, so we were in an off-Broadway theater, mm. but that's almost, that it's almost being in a Broadway theater. Mm. We had people from Broadway come and watch us, wow. yeah, and we also went to Alvin Ailey. What is the main story there? So the main story is about a rainmaker. It's a woman, mm -hmm. a woman protagonist, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, and she is searching um, for rain for her 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 tribe, mm -hmm. and they've had nothing for for months and years, in fact, and it's dry as a bone. And mm. she goes and all over Botswana, so we get to see all the different tribes highlighted and their different cultural ways and singing and dancing, mm. and it's a musical. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all in Setswana mostly, mm -hmm. um, but we had subtitles in English, and mm. so people could understand that, mm. that for in America, you know. Why didn't it go international? <laughs> Don't tell me it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> gives COVID as an excuse. Right. Mm. It should have gone international. Mm. Um, yeah, there were issues in terms of in terms of taking it there after after this, um, which. It's very complex. It's mm. very complex. First of all, you've got to raise the funds. Don't it's tell me politics got into it. No, politics did get it there. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> the newspapers got there. Mm. And I left, mm -hmm. basically. I had to, to step back. Just too traumatic um, for you? It, no, I had to step back for their safety and for them to mm -hmm. carry on. Okay. Um, but also, you know, they needed a manager. They needed management. Mm -hmm. That is not something a patron can provide a loan. Okay. I'm going to have to call you back to sure. discuss the yes. other issues, that two that I'm not touching on mm -hmm. because of time. Sure. Um, but uh, you, can, you can ask me a question. This is the time when you get to ask me <laughs> any question of your choosing. I would love to know. Mm -hmm. I would love to know your first memory that is the most impactful, made the most impact in your life. Growing up, yeah. There are so many, but I think the experience of my mother pinching me because I didn't take school seriously. I think I was doing standard four, okay. and she wanted me to um, know about trigonometry and algebra, and I didn't see the relevance of those things. And she kept pinching me, and I saw my thighs turning Ooh. sort of blue or gangrene mm. or whatever. And as a result of wanting to save my thighs and my life, I resolved and I told her that from that day onwards, I'm going to be either number one or number two in everything that I do. None of this nonsense of you pinching me nonstop. So I started taking my school seriously. Wow. That was a first major turning point, mm. and I've hung on to that from way back then, yes. where I'm striving to be either number one or number two at everything that I attempt. That's incredible. Mm. Thank you. That was a very <laughs> wonderful <laughs> insight into yeah. your life. Thank you, you so much. You asked the question. Yes. You asked it. A, a tough question there. Um, we come to the point where I want to ask you the, um, the question about the crystal ball. Mm -hmm. Looking back, looking forward, mm -hmm. 10, 15 years in your crystal ball, what do you see? Where do you see the Kama? Where do you see Thea Kama incorporated, mm -hmm. so to speak, and what do you see happening around you? Yeah, well, I'd love to see the teen spirit grow mm. to an international brand, mm -hmm. yes, but from Botswana. Mm -hmm. um, I do still see myself uh, with Botswana, 
and um, with this country. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's home now. Mm -hmm. And and mm, I want to have written more books. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and really be known for, for, for as a writer. Yeah, it's another space I'd love to get into. Mm -hmm. It's just that it is time consuming as you probably experienced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, unless you're very well uh, marketed, it's mm. it's not a lucrative mm. thing for income, okay. but it is. But it can be. It can okay. be amazing if you can get out there and you get the time to do it. So yes. I would love to have the time by then to do. You you need that. to throw yourself into mm. it. You and you be completely financially stable, so mm. that you know I don't have those concerns of survival. Paying the bills. Yeah, paying yeah. any bills or doing any of mm. that. So mm. by then. That 15 years from now. Oh. Mm. Wow. It's Nirvana. <laughs> Nirvana. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is the time of the show when you look at that camera um, and speak to somebody there. There's probably some individual who wants some inspiration, something to take away from this conversation. You can maybe pick a word or two from Rough Diamond mm. and uh, share with that, with that viewer. My wish for you is to be the greatest inspiration in your own life and for you to follow through on those dreams that you have. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot because it's all possible. Thank you. Um, I think it would be also useful for you to share your contact details if you're accessible on social media. And most importantly, tell them where to find this book, Rough Diamond. Uh, you can find me at Thea at theakama.com or www.theakama.com. You can also find me on social media, also Thea Kama, everywhere. You just see it. T-H-E-A-K-H-A-M-A. -A thank okay. you. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. It remains for me to thank you for coming to the studio and sharing your story. Um, I want you to promise me you'll come back and talk about attachment issues and the trust process. Mm. We'll broaden the subject. Mm. Come back six months uh, from now, Wonderful. at least, and then we'll have a bigger conversation. Thank you very much. Thank for coming. you. Mm. Thank you. <laughs>